What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and Apple has just released their latest version of iOS 9 Beta 5, as well as a public Beta 3 version for all our public testers. So in this video, I'm gonna run you through all of the changes, and this is actually a very, very big iOS 9 Beta update. There's quite a bit that has been updated and added to it. So I'm gonna walk you through all those new features. I'm gonna show you guys what, in terms of stability and performance, you know, how it is, battery life, and also give you guys an idea of what to expect in terms of all these small smaller features as well. And if you guys haven't updated to it or installed it yet, I'll be showing you guys how to do that as well. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump right in. I just want to mention that this is probably the most well-polished iOS 9 beta I've seen to date. It runs so well. I mean, it's very, very smooth. Apple has finally, you know, stopped adding so many features and focused on the actual, you know, stability of it. And you can definitely tell it's been worked on. It's very well-polished. It's a lot smoother. Now, there is some delay that I've noticed opening up the app switch like there's a stutter, which I don't like. Sometimes if you open up an application, there's a little bit of a delay that shouldn't be there, but otherwise, you know, it works very well. Now as for battery life, I've noticed that it is a little bit better. It's not draining as fast, even though it's literally been only a few hours, just having it sit there or using it, I've noticed the battery life is a little bit better, but I haven't had an issue with that. It may be different for people that have had an issue with it. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump into those features. Now aside from a well-polished interface, Apple has added new wallpapers to this latest iOS 9 beta 5. So if we jump into the wallpaper settings, we can now go and choose a new wallpaper and be careful. You will lose this wallpaper if you do have it. Apple has removed it and added several new ones and oh boy, do they look great. I mean, it's so sharp. It shows off that retina display. As you can see, man, these, these really do look great. And if I actually scroll, you'll notice that some of the older wallpapers have disappeared. The old globe wallpaper is no longer there. So Apple has removed some older ones and added new ones instead. I really hope they bring them back. I enjoy them. I don't know why they would completely erase them. But if you guys want to download these, I will have a link for those down below in the description. So if you don't want to run iOS 9, but want these wallpapers, I'll have a link for those down there. But they look great. Several new wallpapers in here. So if we actually go into the display settings right here, if you go into the view, you'll notice that it brings up the stock iOS 9 wallpaper that we were shown first, and which is no longer available in the wallpapers. That was interesting, I thought. Now I took screenshots again before and after this update. And before updating, I had available 44 9 gigabytes and 55.4 capacity. After updating, the capacity was up to 55.5, so 0.1 gigabytes, and I was added 0.1 gigabyte to my uh, available storage, which I thought was interesting. So every single update, Apple's adding more and more storage to iOS 9, which is great. I mean, it's interesting. I wonder what little changes they're making in order to add 0.1 gigabytes every single update, but it's a very nice change. I'm glad Apple's doing it. Who would complain about more storage? For AT&T users, Apple has finally added Wi-Fi calling. I've heard reports that it's available for Sprint as well. I cannot confirm that, but for AT&T, it is surely there. Apple has finally enabled Wi-Fi calling, which was previously only available for T-Mobile phones, which is great. I mean, a good step in the right direction. In cellular settings, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, there is now a Wi-Fi assist. So this will pretty much pick up if your LTE signal is faulty or you know it's weak, this will pick up where that left off. It'll help maintain a very stable internet connection and uh, the best internet speeds. Now in the new music application, if we open open this guy up and scroll down, there is now a shuffle all option. So if you go ahead and click on that, it'll shuffle all of your music. And the best thing about this new shuffle all option is that it does fix these shuffle issues. So whenever playing music from a playlist and you didn't have it set on repeat, it would repeat the same song several times and that has been fixed. Now also this recently added text has been fixed. So if I actually go to my music over here, as you can see, it's been compressed and it's a little bit smaller than on the previous version in iOS 9 beta 4. The shift in back backspace keys on iOS 9 beta 5 have been simplified. So they're very minimal now. They've got this very minimal look to them. If I show you the previous one, so as you can see, the icons look a little bit different, behave a little bit different uh, when you activate them. So it looks just a little bit different. Now, actually in general and handoff settings, the option to view relevant applications depending on your location has been removed in this latest beta. It's not apparent why, but you're no longer able to get relevant applications depending on your location in handoff. Something I was happy to see if you actually go into general and scroll down, you'll now see a new regulatory tab in here. This isn't anything new. It was available in the about settings. It's just been relocated. Now, the reason I think this has been relocated is because of the new e-label act signed into law by President Obama. What it basically means is basically if you make the FCC labels page right here more uh, easily accessible, you will no longer be required to put these labels on the back of your phone. So new iPhone 6S could be a lot cleaner as a result. And we're seeing the very 
very first step towards that right here. Now, one I can't really show you because I don't have a CarPlay compatible device, but users with CarPlay are reporting a slightly tweaked interface when actually viewing media or thumbnails for your music, as well as the ability to heart music from Apple Music or Beats One radio station. So some welcome changes to CarPlay in there as well. Now, contact suggestions over here, if you actually click on one, the labels below them have been removed. So it no longer says call or text. You just have the icons right here. So it's a little bit of a cleaner look. Now in the keyboard settings, in the settings, the uh, text shortcuts has been relocated and renamed to text replacement. So in here, you can change text shortcuts to uh, whatever you want it to be. Now this is a very, very tiny one, so pay attention. But whenever disabling Wi-Fi, instead of getting a fade out, instead of getting a one bar at a time disappearing you know, animation, it's now just a gray fade out. So I'm gonna turn it off, look right here. So it's gonna turn gray very momentarily. Uh, I've noticed that it's kind of hard to see sometimes, but it'll turn gray and then disappear. Instead of on older versions, just one bar at a time would disappear. Now iBooks has a new theme. So if actually I open up a book here and go into the theming options, there's now an auto night theme, which will automatically adjust to a night mode. Now in the Siri Spotlight view, if you actually slide down, you can now easily access the keyboard just like that. Very simple, you know, just slide down and boom, there it is. Now, in the calendar application, there's now a new page that greets you that'll show you some new things inside of the calendar. Calendar now shows you events like flights, restaurants, reservations found in email. So this is finally available. And calendar also uses Apple Maps to look up locations and traffic conditions to tell you when it's time to leave. So really cool. And lastly, Siri can now enable low power mode. This isn't a new feature, it's just been fixed. Siri, enable low power mode. And there you go. So it's been enabled. So really cool guys. All around iOS 9 beta 5 is very well polished. Like I said, extremely smooth. It's definitely received a much needed performance boost and I'm happy to see Apple working on that. Battery life is great as always for me personally and I've got nothing to complain about. Plenty of new features, lots of around that rough edges optimizations and it's just all around great to see that Apple's making headway on iOS 9. I'm very excited to see the final version. Now, if you guys haven't installed it, I'm gonna show you how right there in the link it's for beta one. One, very simple, very same process. I'll update the links for beta five. And over here, if you guys already have it, of course, running, you can easily get it over the air by going into general software update, and it'll be right here. So go ahead and update to that. Now, if you guys are on public beta two, same thing, you'll see an update in here for public beta three. It has been released at the very same time. They're pretty much the same. I mean, there's really no reason to go to public beta if you're on the regular beta or vice versa. So wouldn't really recommend that. But I do hope you enjoyed this video. Just wanted to show you all of the new changes in iOS 9 beta 5. Again, I'm very happy to see Apple making progress and seeing this firmware develop into something very usable makes my heart very happy. So again, I'm very excited to see this in final form. Thanks for watching guys. Have a great day. Enjoy iOS 9 beta 5. Peace.